people say to me, you know, is authenticity saying everything that I think? And I'm like, Lord, no, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Talks, the podcast brought to you by Nash Squared and hosted by myself, David Savage, that's been bringing you the latest thinking from technology leaders for over eight years. On today's show, I am talking to Catherine Rose, the founder of GetWise. But before that, I'm joined by Akish. How are you? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, good. Very confused. I was chatting to um, an American that I know very, and I said, "Oh, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving because mm-hmm. Black Friday started." So I got very, con- very confused and lost. And got the dates it wrong. Hasn't actually been Thanksgiving yet. Black Black it's- Friday just seems to now be this all-encompassing event that goes on forever. Black Friday week. I heard someone in the office calling it earlier. Uh, My God, which started on Friday. I think Thanksgiving is this weekend coming up. I want to say yes. Well, now now yes. I know that yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our yeah. two guests this week are both American, mm. uh, North American, uh, uh, citizens of the United States. I'm going to offend both Latin Americans and Canadians if I'm not very, very careful here. All right. Uh, but Catherine Rose, today's guest, is from Boston. Mm. Uh, and then our guest later in the week is from North Carolina, Todd. So um, uh, very much a, a, an other side of the pond. Happy Thanksgiving, couple of episodes. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, um, I haven't partook, partook, partaked. I don't know. I haven't taken part in the Black hmm. Friday sales. I don't know whether you have. I haven't. No, I'll be honest with you. I'm inundated with emails saying Black Friday special, no, Black no. Friday deals, discounts. I I'm not going to lie to you. Last night, uh, I sat there in bed before going to sleep, and you know I'm on the on the lookout for a couple of bits, you know, and. Went on the website. Christmas shopping. It does help with Christmas shopping if you can get some well, deals. Yeah, exactly. Or just shopping for myself. And the things that I wanted to have were not on the Black Friday thing. So I was like, well, there's not a sale on it. You know, I'm not that incentivized to buy it right you mean, now. You mean so. to say cricket bats aren't on Black Friday? Cricket bats aren't on Black Friday. Neither are <laughs> trainers or, uh, you know, I was looking at a, a coat. Uh, for the colder, you know, winter months. Yeah, Although yeah, yeah. someone yeah. in Boston, North Carolina, probably laugh at when we say it's cold because it gets rather chilly there, doesn't it? So I think it does. I think it does. Mm. Well, look. Um, one thing I would say, just a, a throwback to an episode we had a few weeks ago. If you remember, we had Fairphone on the show. Just remember, Black Friday it might be exciting, but the most sustainable device you own is the one you already own. Um, also, some stats. Um, Third quarter of last year, investment in climate tech down 40%. Um, We have a climate crisis going on. Probably not the best idea to be going out and buying a whole load of products that have quite a big carbon footprint attached. But nonetheless, obviously, one or two purchases. We all appreciate that household budgets are stretched at the minute and uh, people, people need to make savings where they can. So... Shop, but shop responsibly. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not entirely mm. sure what I'm trying to say, but that, that kind of makes sense, right? Mm, it does, it does. Be careful, but be sustainable. Be sustainable where you can. Don't go there and buy go. something you don't need. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right. We'll hand over to our interview with Catherine. We'll be back afterwards. Today, I'm chatting to Catherine Rose, someone who I'm very lucky to have, very fortunate rather, to have got to know through Women in Tech Global. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks so much, David. Great to be here. Now you have to remind me, I know you're on the East Coast of the States, but my, my knowledge of, of American geography gets a little bit hazy. Where, whereabouts are you? I'm outside of the Boston area. Yeah. So north, northeast. I'm northeast, guessing it's, exactly. it's fall now, maybe. It's just about turning fall. Yeah, it was. Um, we, we were still in the 90 plus degree Fahrenheit, of course, um, heat. Yeah. And uh, now it's in the 70s. So we're, we're getting there. Those numbers mean nothing. No, no. <laughs> I, I have to do a quick Cooler. bit of mental arithmetic in my head. Now, I have to say the the kind of fall in New England kind of area is something that at some point in my life, I would like to see everyone does say that the colors are amazing. It is absolutely beautiful. It is. Looking forward to that. It's my favorite time of year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, look, um, thanks for spending some time with us today. Um Let's talk a little bit about you before anything else and what you do on a day-to-day basis. You have two main brands, right, that you kind of work under or take to market, GetWise and ChannelWise. What are they all about? 
So both of them are expert advice networks. So we have a platform that connects uh, connects small business folks, startups, and on the channel wise side, managed service providers that that sell, resell IT um, consulting and services with vetted subject matter experts that help them go farther faster in their business. And the idea is, is that, uh, you know, sometimes you just need to talk to somebody, right? You, everyone wants you to take their course or read their book and they're very valuable and, and that, and that can be super helpful. But if my, you know, if you want to go forward faster, just pick up the phone and call someone. And so that's what we do. We vet the experts, we, um, and we provide that service to that, those communities. How much of it is taking a plethora of information that's online and making it, I suppose, more person to person versus, you know, in this in this slightly hybrid world, you know, I do see platforms where it's like asset as experts online, and it's almost like a kind of quasi dating app kind of like experience on an app versus, I suppose, trying to get back into person and 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 getting back to something that feels a little bit more traditional. Where where does this uh, this offering sit? So it actually kind of goes over both because we are virtual. So you can do, you can set a, uh, uh, folks can set a time with me to talk about sales because that's really my background or networking or any of that, those kinds of things. And um, of course, I'm a, a, a tech founder as well. So I can, I can speak to those, those challenges, of course. Um, but also what we've done is we've made an experiential version of it. So we take the experts, our, our experts, or we can take it to conferences and use um, the conference uh, speakers and we call them coaching cafes and we bring them into the conferences and where you can have a one-on-one face-to-face um in real life versus the versus the virtual so but the idea is is you know you can find a lot of information online but again at the end of the day it's like your your situation may be unique to Mm. you know the the product or service or situation you find yourself in and just being able to have that human connection really is super valuable to folks Everyone wants advice. Finding kind of um, a focus could be quite difficult. <laughs> um, so what, what do the typical personas look like of people who are using the service? Really, it's, it, it sort of runs the gamut. So we have a lot of small business folks who are just trying to figure out, you know, should I raise, should I raise funds? How can I get funds? How can I get started? Um, we have startups who they're scale ups, right? You know, how do you how do you get to that next level? Um, and on the channel side, on the IT channel side, a lot of it is um, mergers and acquisitions. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity in M&A going on on that side. Technology questions, um, sales and marketing is really the biggest thing for a lot of these folks um, that they really need the help with. You said their sales and marketing is something that in particular people are asking for help with. What are people concerned with right now? You know, the, the world feels like it's a fairly... Um, not entirely sure what the right word to say is, but you know, it's difficult to raise funds if you're a startup. There's a lot of external factors. There's the climate crisis over in Europe. We've obviously got the Ukrainian crisis. There's there's a lot going on right now for people, and, and that filters yeah. down into into their professional lives. Um, what what's on what's on the forefront of the minds of your users? I think it's it's all that, right? And, and 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 if you look around, it sounds like there's all bad news. But what I tell people when they book time with me is is you know people are making money, <laughs> you know, so it's like how to filter out the noise, how to see the nuggets of opportunity, how to make sure your cash flow and your your business is shored up for those eventual ups and downs. You know, I've been I've been around for for a while. I could say I'm a little more of a seasoned founder than some of the some folks you may you may run into. And, you know, I I was the dot com, you know, bust. And then, um, you know, uh, the other financial crises, it it kind of ebbs and flows. And so when you see that, you know, that's coming and you know that, you know, uh, it's always there's always opportunity. So it's like trying to figure out where that is, but also um, making sure that your business is set up so that you can weather the storms that are out there because they're, they're going to be there. You, you speak to your experience there. Um, what do you think it is, if you look at yourself, that has allowed you to weather those storms? What What is it in your, not in your DNA, because some of it is, is learned, but the, 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 the skill set that you've acquired over time that has allowed you to not just survive, but, but succeed? I, I honestly credit my, my, my family. My, my, you know, I grew up, my grandmother lived with us. Um, my my mom's dad, my grandfather died when my mom was ten, and my my grandmother had to raise three kids, um, you know, by herself. 
And it was a, it was not a time women didn't even have their own credit cards. They couldn't buy property and you know, those kinds of things. And so, you know, she really had to, she had to, she had to do it. And, um, and then uh, about 15 years ago, I was working on wall street and, um, doing very well. And, the mar- mortgage market melted down, right? So one of those those economic downturns. And at the same time, I was pregnant with my first child and my mom had a brain aneurysm and left her paraplegic. So within three months, I lost my job. I had a brand new baby and I had to, and I had to figure out how to help take care of my mom. And it was a very trying time, but because I grew up in a family that was so resilient, right? And they still are. I mean, God bless my my folks are my mom's still here, my 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 dad's still here, and so um, they never complain. They just say this is this is this is the cards that were dealt. And so for me, it's always trying to trying to um, you know figure out how to turn challenges into opportunities, um, and I just try to keep as positive as an attitude as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so you are always, you know, in person, and hopefully this comes across uh, during the course of the podcast, but you are a very warm uh, and and kind of positive character. Um, <laughs> before we hit record, you talked about the, the need for people to kind of have a sense of humor. Um, yeah. Do we, do we sometimes make business and, and our professional lives a little bit too serious? I think we take ourselves too seriously. I think we take a lot of things too seriously. Um, I mean, there's things out there that are serious, right? They're serious topics, of course. course. But um, I I do think the ability to see things in a different way, in a humorous way. um, You know, when I'm when I'm confronted with a a, a challenge, I I was I, I talk about the fact that I go into business mode where I just kind of like, okay, block and tackle. Like, what's what do I need to do now to this, to this, to this? But, you know, we, I still try to find a way to be, bring levity to the situation because, you know, I don't know, it's, it's a coping mechanism if you want to call it that. But, um, but there's, there's so much out there to be unhappy about. Maybe sometimes it's a little easier for people to be unhappy. I just feel like there's gotta be, there's gotta be a way someone has to bring the sunshine. (laughs) I'm going to try to do it. (laughs) Look, you, you've been really successful in in building your brand over time um and you know you 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 have a strong network a strong presence and it's something that a lot of people are striving for especially as we're you know ever increasingly in a a kind of a hybrid world and spend so much time online i think this is quite interesting it's quite timely a couple of days ago one of the uh, linkedin editors for north america um asked me to comment on some articles that they'd written in, you know, in the hope that you might kind of earn a uh, a community voice badge or something like that. And they directed right. me to an article. So this is quite timely. That was, how do you maintain an authentic pers- personal brand online? <laughs> and there was a lot on there that was quite, I don't know, it felt like it was very paint by numbers or, so, or, or almost sociopathic kind of like build genuine relationships <laughs> be yourself like, well yes obviously showcase your achievements um and you know there are the various comments not some of the comments i made i won't kind of say who these were, were from but nothing builds authenticity like screaming about your own personal achievements on social media it's how i met Agreed. all of my most authentic yeah. friends you know yeah. it's like <laughs> it does seem that people are a bit nonplussed about how they go about this and some of the advice just looks alien How do you think people should go about building that brand, given that so much of it is in a completely unhuman setting? Well, it's funny that you say that because, you know, you've seen me speak. So I I did the um, stand up to stand out uh, uh, talk at the Women in Tech Global Summit. And I'm doing something similar um, coming up, you know, talking about building thought leadership. And, you know, people always talk about what's authentic, like people want to show up authentic. And and I say that, you know, some people say to me, you know, is authenticity saying everything that I think? I'm like, Lord, no, (laughs) please don't. (laughs) Because you know, I think authentic means is that you you're just you're comfortable in your own skin and you're and you're comfortable being out there. It doesn't mean that you have to be um, abrasive or nasty or angry, you know. And so um, I think that for me, I, 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 I like people. I really do. I like to I like to learn about different people. I like to, um, you know, learn about their ideas and their cultures and things like that. And so for me, it's easy to to 
to try to connect with people. I, I really, I really enjoy doing it. Um, but I'm also one of those people who I just, I always like to connect the dots because I do, I think that, um, doing so, like if, if I wanted to introduce you to somebody or, um, you know, thinking about, you know, a conference that's coming up that, you know, you'd be a great fit for or whatever, I'll just reach out to you. Or I see something online and I, I see that someone's going through something. I'll just text them and say, Hey, I'm thinking about you, you know, because, um, you know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of people who, who, who take that, that step. And I, and I appreciate it when people do it for me. So I try to, I try to do it for others. But for me, I mean, I have contacts, um, going back, you know, to my banking days and beforehand. And so every conference I speak at, you know, those kinds of things. And I, 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 I feel like a network is something that is very, um, you know, it, it's so valuable that it needs that care, feeding and nurturing if you really want it to work for you in the long run. Hmm. What about if someone's quite naturally introverted and that's kind of counter to their nature? How, how do you kind of advise people to, I suppose, cope with that in a, in a world that must feel quite kind of unfriendly to them sometimes? It's interesting, like during the, from the, during the pandemic, I realized that I'm, I'm, I'm like an extroverted introvert because I'm the person who will go, but I'll get overwhelmed and then I'll kind of like hide in my room <laughs> because it does, it does get a little overwhelming. I think for folks that, um, that, you know, being out and about in public, you know, maybe is not comfortable one of the one of the positive things that came out of the pandemic is the is the um, you know the normalization shall we say of the video right so you can be on video you can be um, you know you you can you don't even have to leave your house so you don't have to go to big conferences you can you can um, connect with folks LinkedIn for example as you mentioned you know you can have genuine connections on those platforms without even actually you know connecting with them in person should you decide that that's not comfortable for you. So I think it's, you, you just have to show up again, comfortable in your own skin and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to have 20,000 connections. You know what I mean? You can have, um, you know, the, the ones that are, that are really truly, um, comfortable and, um, and, and, and whatever it is for you, um, that makes a difference for them and for you. We, we do live in a hyper-connected world. I mean, you said earlier that, you know, if, if something sprang to mind, you went, ah, that, that person would be great for this event, this conference, this panel, you know. Yeah. I some I read somewhere though that you know we can only hold something like I don't know twenty or thirty relationships in our head at any one time. I, I don't know. It might be a bit more than that, but it's certainly not many. And yet we live in this world where we're connected to thousands of people. You know, first degree connections, second degree connections. God knows how many second degree connections and all of this kind of stuff. How are we supposed to genuinely? maintain those relationships and manage them in a world where we do have so much connectivity? I don't necessarily know that you maintain all the relationships at the same level. So if you look at it as, 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 as like, you know, you're, um, you know, when you put the pebble in the water, right. And the, the, those folks in the middle, the, those are your like core, you know, folks that you, maybe that, that 20, 30, when you're talking about, and then back in the day when social media first started, I think it was like, it's a, it's a, uh, Dunbar 130 or Dunbar 160. There's a number that that's about the um, amount of people that you can have in kind of your close acquaintance sphere. Right. And then from there, it kind of goes out. It doesn't mean that you have to be connected to these people all the time, but what it means is, is that as you go through, you're just, I mean, I'm just always, again, trying to connect the dots. I just try to pay attention, you know, to what's out there. And I'll say, um, you know, if I'm going to speak at a conference, first thing I do actually is go to LinkedIn and be like, okay, who do I know? Who, who am I connected to on LinkedIn in that area? Hmm. Now I'm not going to be like, Hey, let's go out to dinner. Cause I don't know you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but I might say, Hey, I'm going to be at this conference. If you want to stop by, you know, for coffee, it'd be great to meet you or, um, come to the conference, you know, cause oftentimes as speakers, as you know, and moderators, we get free tickets. So it's, it might be something for them, um, might be an interesting thing for them to, uh, to take part in. So, you know, it's, 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 I think everything in life, it's, it, it's a, it's a level of effort, right? Mm. Your, your family relationships are a level of effort, your close friend relationships, your business colleagues, and then it kind of goes out from there. And you just have to, you just have to decide the level of effort that you, that you want to put in. And what advice would you have to 
would be entrepreneurs who are starting out at their the, the first few steps of their career in this particular climate that we're we're in at the moment? Well, first thing, uh, and I think we've talked about this before, is I I, I would like to um you know I, I would like to veer away from this glamorization of entrepreneurship. Like this stuff is mm -hmm. hard. Okay, so um you know it, it's it's not for the faint of heart. I'll just be honest about it. Like if you, you know, if you, if you expect to come in here and everyone's going to do everything for you and, um, you know, it, it's, that's not how it is. And, and we joke about it, especially folks from corporate that come into entrepreneurship. I, I say that, you know, it's all fun and games until someone has to order the toilet paper and paper towels and that's you. <laughs> so, so you have to be able to, um, and entrepreneurship is the highs and the lows. Mm. And you have to, uh, first thing I would say is, Make sure you set your business up properly, right? You know, that that anyone can tell you. Make sure you're, you know, you're set up to pay yourself, you're legal, all that kind of stuff. So at least you have that base of foundation. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, they're like, oh my God, my logos look so cool. Well, you know, that's not gonna help you with your cash flow, right? So so I think that's that's a piece of it. Unfortunately, the early money, the 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 seed, the early seed, um, the pre-seed and, and and some seed money on the VC side is much, much more challenging to get. It used to take, you know, six months to a year. Now they're taking they're saying it's taking even longer than that. Um, so you just have to you just have to know that 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 may that may take you that long and you have to be able to plan for it. So it's really um, just making sure. And then I also want to take, you know, yes, this is hard. But you can't go like that hustle culture and burn out because that's exactly what's going to happen. So you have to plan your next two to three years in, in, in stages. And, you know, this hyper growth is great. If you don't get a huge cash infusion, it's going to be much more challenging for you to do that. So the slow and steady growth and you have your own milestones. What does that look like for you? And then follow that along um, and adapt as you as you have to go. But you know, give yourself that, that, that grace. And as a quick final question, you're obviously still learning all the time. We all are. What question do you go to conferences with at the moment wanting answers to? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think for me, when, when I go to conferences now, I, uh, I, I look for the speakers that are going to, um, that are going to tell me something that I, I don't know, and they're going to really excite me and give me some, some new information. I think the other thing is when, when I go to conferences, it's really more for, um, you know, who, who can I meet and who can I connect with and who can I learn from? Um, I think the questions I have now is um, about, what what do people really need to help make their life better, <laughs> their business better, their life better? Um, and that's where I really, you know, that's where my business is. That's where I, I live, actually. So. so if someone wants to find out a little bit more about GetWise and ChannelWise, best way to do it? Well, getwiseconnect.com is uh, for the small businesses and startups and channelwise.com is for the IT um, industry. And of course, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn. Amazing. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, so there's there's a lot in here that, that I thought we could very, very quickly unpack and then talk about some of the tech news. Um, but I wanted to talk about something that um, Catherine talks about and, and use it as a, as a springboard. So much out there to be unhappy about. Someone has to bring the sunshine. Mm. Right? And so I want to bring a bit of sunshine and draw some attention to a couple of things that happened last week. That is namely the Tech Women 100 Awards run yep. by We Are The City, which I was very kindly invited to MC. That was on Thursday last week. And also Catherine was at the Tech in, uh, sorry, Women in Tech, rather, Global Movement Awards. So a load of award winners there, Women in Tech Startups, Most Impactful Initiative, uh, Women in Web3, Aspiring Teen, Arts Awards, etc. Um, both We Are the City and Women in Tech Global are two organizations that we, through this podcast, have been heavily involved with. So if we're talking about the fact that there's a lot to be unhappy out, uh, about out there and we need to bring some sunshine, those awards and recognizing the amazing contributions of quite literally hundreds of women in the technology industry is a brilliant place to start. Yes, I um, completely agree with you, Dave. To be honest, I saw your Instagram stories and yep. all of your... Many. Many, many Instagram stories. Was, if I'm not mistaken as well, were you also 
in close proximity to the computer weekly voted most influential woman in tech as well in the uk Suki Suki yeah, Fuller. absolutely we're on yes. the same table there we go there we go i she did told, I... she told me that i would be james bond to her m and i would wow. enjoy telling me what to do you're, you're a hard man to tell what to do uh Suki. so uh, yeah there's that but going back to the point i think she's, um, she's on the show in a couple of weeks as well we've, we've already done that interview yeah lovely um so i think i think in terms of you know when you talk about the associations obviously we here at the pod have been partnered up with you know all those um kind of I, I guess amazing women but it's more so something that resonates out to me is is the stories behind them and you know the reasons to as to how and why you know they have um become business founders and and why they're you know pioneers almost for not almost but they are pioneers for change um and i think the whole sort of bringing an a you know a, a ray of sunshine or bringing you know kind of light at the end of the tunnel all these analogies can be used but effectively it's you know disrupting the the the, the kind of you know the the usual and the constant and i think by highlighting the achievements promoting and also championing um you know these females in tech that is the next sort of you know the next wave of, of of i guess generations to come really so um yeah. i think it's amazing man like you know and and i'm um yeah every, like it, it looked amazing on on the socials and on linkedin and twitter and instagram and all that sort of stuff but i think um i think the fact that we are celebrating these females um it just needs to kind of carry on and we need to keep shouting it right and uh celebrating celebrating diversity in all its forms especially the women who are in the room who those who were nominated who weren't in the room and didn't win hmm. amazing work that's going on out there yeah <laughs> and look you know Catherine's own story you know she was on wall street then there was the mortgage meltdown she had a baby she lost a job her mother fell ill um it's those kind of stories that people need to hear about because um you know Catherine is 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 a successful founder entrepreneur um, but hasn't had it easy and you can't be what you can't see without knowing that there are other people there who've toughed it out and succeeded then Absolutely. other people will get despondent so any, anything to kind of celebrate and to push forward the, the achievements of this incredible community all the better Absolutely and I think um, more so now right when, when we look at the markets we look at conflict around the world we look at you know all these yep. external factors that has a massive impact on business on on commerce on on the economy um and to have the diversity of thought and of the you know the diversity of of um business um i think it bodes well to consumers like you and i because you know things for us will be a lot more available and there'll be a wider choice um mm -hmm. if we just left it to the grey, pale, male, stale, whatever it's called, right? People so, look like me. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to say um, Dave, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> look, a bit of tech news that we're not going to talk about, but we are going to reference because it provides a nice little trailer for Thursday. Sam Altman, um, if you go on to many tech websites at the minute, many tech news websites, they will be talking about the fact that hundreds of OpenAI employees threatened to resign and join Microsoft. Turmoil at OpenAI after firing of Sam Altman. What's next for the creators of ChatGPT? Sam Altman isn't coming back to AI, OpenAI. It's almost like BBC Sports rolling updates on some <laughs> sports event. Um, yeah. Open AI yeah. board in discussions with Sam Altman to return as CEO. Then Microsoft hires Open AI CEO Sam Altman. Um, quite what's going to happen here, but it shows it shows the excitement, I suppose, in the in the market generally speaking over AI and Open AI and generative AI. Um, that this is this is generating quite so many headlines. Oh, also it shows that he's generating headlines. I mean, he was he was trending like anything for a few days. Um, yeah, still is, you know. I think. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And um, weird, right? Because you said five years ago, generative AI, you know, Chat GPT, these sorts of things. You've told anyone that they are, oh, yeah, it's a load of crap, right? And now look at this guy. I mean, you know, he, he's he's up there. He's a household name. Maybe well, we would have said that. Maybe there are other people who are more more in the know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I definitely would have said that five, six years ago. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but I think, I think now you look at someone like him, and he, he's become a you know name that comes up in conversation, household name. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So fair, fair play. And look, 
we're not going to talk about this in great detail because you can go to other websites and other sources and get far better information. But on Thursday, we have Todd Olson on the show, CEO of Pendo, um, who do provide AI services to their clients. And interestingly, whilst at Web Summit told me that they'd been asked to turn some of those services off Ooh. by some of their clients. Ooh. Let you guess why, but that'll be on Thursday. Akish, thank you very much for your time. No worries. Oh.